What is up, Rap Potential YouTube? Welcome to the final video for the REW. So we hope. We're getting ready to stack this engine, assuming everything goes together perfectly. So, here are the things that I'm going to do different from the last time. Literally, there's only one. I glued the little corner pieces to the apex seal. So it's like one seal now. Otherwise, I'm going to do everything the exact same way. I did decide, as we talked about, I'm not going to reuse the coolant seals. I bought another soft seal kit that I'm going to use to put this together. So we've got new coolant seals to use, new dowel pin O-rings, ready to go. Those are really the only two things that were consumed from the old kit. So I'll have a bunch of spares. We're going to reuse tension bolt O-rings. They're literally on for... You know, barely any, none of them are tore up. Um, and I'm going to continue to use the rest of the O-rings for the engine. So we've got the rear stationary gear O-ring and your uh, like injector diffuser O-rings, um, etc., etc. And then I'll put the new front and rear main seal in and we'll be ready to go. So I'm not going to go through every nitty gritty detail putting this one together. I'm just going to put it together. As we remember, the reason we had to take this engine back apart is because the oil control rings weren't seated all the way, which allowed for space so those little apex seal pesky two-piece corners could pop out. So here's the rotors ready to go back in, cleaned up. All I did was wipe them down, made sure the seals were all clean, re-greased everything, put it back together. And the oil control rings still after being compressed in the engine, are sitting up just a little bit higher than I like, you know? I mean, they are new. They're definitely down, you know, clamped in there way further than they were before, but they're still sticking out a bit. So, preemptively, I've glued the seals together. Now, this engine, I cleaned all the high tack off, okay? High tack can be a little bit pesky. Brake cleaner is your friend. Don't tear up your paint, though, so you want to be careful just hose and everything and brake cleaner but if you're doing you know if you have to take your engine back apart clean all that stuff out i mean you can easily repaint these if you have black or blue or whatever you know housing's all cleaned up there was no damage done to the housings um no damage to any of this so we're ready to stack this thing back up so i got the heat going in here oh yeah yeah, yeah. this week is rally car for sale week so if you haven't checked out the rally car auction go check it out go at least Read through it. Check out the pictures. Let me know what you think of my buddy's pictures. I'm pretty amped. So hopefully one of you guys ends up with it. But anyways, I'm going to get to stacking this up. And uh, I'll let you know if I run into any issues. I glued these together. Put them in here. Had six chances, right, to get these in without them, like, the corners breaking off. I got one of them to go in. Right here. This one went in and the corner piece didn't break now i'm not a super glue expert but i glued them together like a solid i don't know three hours ago shaved off the excess glue they were pretty dang straight you know like the corner pieces weren't like cocked all one way but just any crazy like i pushed down all the force on it and bam it popped apart so i had to re-super glue them with great care and put them back in and I was a little more gentle on them this time, and they all went in. So that's where we're at. They're glued down. Now I'm still gonna be super nutty careful and check these once I get this center iron ready to go on here, but they're de they definitely stay down way better with the glue than, you know, obviously they're stuck. Um, but it is just a little more tedious. Um, I don't know. I think, uh, you know, these school control rings are in pretty good. and uh, I probably not needed to do that, but we're being extra careful this time. And uh, I don't know that I'll glue them on the next one because that was kind of like took an extra 45 minutes of my time or 30 minutes of my time to re-glue them together before I could put them back in to where I was already at this point. So, like, I had this and I had to wait to put the apex seals in. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how the second rotor goes, but for now, I gotta do my dowel O-ring, put the coolant seals in the center iron, and uh, 
fandango the iron on here and do my silicone for this but the rotors built this is ready for the center iron other than the silicone and the uh, the dowel pin o-ring which I may just put the silicone on the iron I don't know we're gonna do it back to it right now it's the moment of truth we got this whole thing put together again Man, let me tell you, I don't like building engines twice. Building engines two times is not fun. So, let's see. How does it feel? Already got the nut in it. We're torqued up. Feels pretty good. It does have plugs in it. And it's definitely not it's definitely not dragging like it was before. Yes! I'm amped! Woo! I'm also tired, it's pretty late. Okay, it's back together. What did we learn? I learned that gluing your apex seals together is a royal pain in the butt. I also learned from this experience that you need to make sure your oil control rings are seated all the way. I had to re-glue two more of the apex seals because they wouldn't like... Well, one, I broke all six of them apart trying to put the front end together. I only got one in. Then I had to re-glue them all. And I got most, like three of them, the first three in. Then started on the back rotor, got one in, and then they broke the other two. And then uh, it's just like when you're pushing down on them, let me grab my my tool. This is an apex seal from another engine. Um, this, when you push down, it just, like I use this to push the seal down, and it just cracks the corner off after you've super glued it. I mean, I'm using like mega glue here. We got some Gorilla glue. So, anyways, it's together. It feels really good. I am not going to put the bell housing on it and try to compression test it tonight. I'm going to do that tomorrow. So I will include that in this video, but I'm going to bed for now, and then we'll come back doing a compression test here in just a second. Movie magic the next day. We've got coolant pressure tester on here, front stacks on, in place checked, bell housing and stuff's on. And let me tell you, I hit the button before I started the camera, but uh, this thing sounds good now. So that's how that should sound when you're cranking it. So we know nothing's jacked up, we know the end plate's good. I'm gonna put the compression tester on it and I'm gonna put 20 PSI uh, pressure in here in the coolant system and we'll see if it bleeds down. Um, and then also see what these compression numbers are. I'm curious why it's always, it's reading. Okay, here's, here's two things to notice why this would be it's not alarming to me, but just interesting. So we've got, you'll see it, 58, 59, 20. Okay, 105, 107, 36. If you notice, the last whatever many times I ran the test, the last number was always the lowest. Okay, if we had a dead hole, right? So one hole that was lower than the rest, you would get that last number would the low number would move around in the cycle of the compression tester. So my guess is because this is being, you know, it's showing the last one is weird. Once it compression, compression and builds all that, you know, nuts by the time the force is getting through all of my my cables around here and it's lining up with the compression on the front rotor. That's why that one's always low. We'll run it again and see if it does the same thing. That's a theory that I've got. See? Always the last one. Right. The compression tester was also acting a little funny when I compression tested the first gen rally car for the rally car videos. So, anyways, 
I am happy with it. Okay? I'm going to attribute the erratic weirdness compression tester numbers to my compression tester. Um, it's currently been holding 20 PSI coolant pressure for about 30 minutes or so. We'll let it sit for another 30 minutes. Not worried about it. it hasn't moved a lick. Um, when you do put your coolant pressure tester thing on here, it's got like a rubber gasket on the back of it. You really need to crank these down. Sometimes it'll leak over here and over here. So, anyways, with that being said, guys, I'm happy with this thing. Oh, we need to do the torque turnover test. Okay, so with, with the leading plugs in, which the information I had on that before was no plugs in, with the leading plugs in, it took 14 foot-pounds to turn that over. Not too bad. Um, if the normalization is 10, the engine before was 20, I'm pretty happy with that. The end play still checks out, so I think we're ready to button this baby up, put the oil pan on, put the front cover on, and go from there. So I'm going to add in, once I get this front cover stuff going, I'll show you a few tips and tricks when you're putting your front cover on, and then oil pan stuff, super easy. And uh, we're nearing completion on this thing. Two things, guys, you don't want to forget, and one thing that's very important. So, on an old school rotary engine up to the FD engines, okay, like this one, the RX-8s are different. They run a uh, cork style, you know, a, a fabric style, whatever you want to call it, um, front cover gasket, okay? If you're going to run a front cover gasket, you want to make sure that you have this little white support ring for this o-ring this is the main oil pump feed pressure magical o-ring you got to have this thing okay if this o-ring is not here you won't have good oil pressure at all okay the rx8s use a multi-layer steel gasket which i don't have one around here but that's what they use they are also the place where this o-ring would be is smooth on the front iron there's not uh, an embossment for that o-ring to sit into so that multi-layer steel is what actually seals the front cover to the front iron don't forget this o-ring and make sure that you if you are going to run a gasket that you do that you have the little white ring it should be included okay um in your rebuild kit and if you get a rebuild kit for say like like for example uh this one that I've got is for an old school, it's gonna have a beefier O-ring that's gonna go in there. And sometimes, or I guess a majority of time for me on those old school engines, I don't run a front cover gasket, okay? So no um, paper gasket in here. I'll just silicone, like RTV, the front cover to the front iron. Because what that does is it, is it allows the front cover to put more pressure on that O-ring so it doesn't leak. Um, just a little tip of the trade. Now we've got our oil pump on, gears on. You can't put the hub on, so you put your front cover on. Um, the gaskets in here. I tend to just smear these with some uh, RTV on both sides, just so it sticks, um, and it helps keep the like oil from seeping through it. Um, don't forget your oil pressure regulator, guys, down here. Um, some people you can leave that on the iron when you put the iron on. It's kind of hard to get to, but you can also put it on after. You have a nice adjustable wrench you can fit in there. So we're ready to stick the front cover on. You're going to see, still at 20 PSI. It's been a while. I just haven't taken it off yet. Front cover's ready to go. Kind of irked, though, my paint job. Some of this black paint's coming off. So once I get this on here, um, on the engine, I'm going to re-scuff it and touch it up because I don't like how the paint's coming off. And I don't know why. I uh, soda blasted it, wiped it all down, and then scuffed it. And it's still being tricky. So it is what it is. I think I had a my paint can that I got from O'Reilly's had been on the shelf for a while. So, ready to put the front cover on, and uh, I gotta push this front main seal in here. I like to push the front main in with the front cover off, because if you push it in too far, you can push it back out. Um, if you have it on the engine already and it's glued down, you push it too far in, you're kinda SOL. So, make sure you go through all your stuff you have laying around. Don't forget your thermal pellet here, sometimes a lot of times you block this off. Atkins sells a block off part for it. Um, this is basically like the, it's like a thermostat 
for your oil, um, for the oil in the E shaft, and then your pickup too. Make sure that's clean. All right, guys, it's the end of the video. My buddies came and picked up that REW a couple weeks ago, and uh, kind of just going back through the footage I've accumulated and, and getting these videos out for you guys. So, what did we learn in this video? Um, one, just don't rush a rotary engine build. I mean, I didn't rush the other one, um, but needing to have it put together, you know, and the oil controllings are all the way down, the little corners popped up, and it forced me to have to take the engine back apart. And uh, really, you know, cost me about another four or five hours worth of work, you know, to get that done, and hundred and some dollars for some coolant seals. So just make sure, guys, when you are putting your engine together, and I know in the comprehensive engine video that I made sure to mention that issue to you guys um but yeah we also learned that gluing apex seals together is a royal pain in the butt and uh albeit it does fix that issue it definitely adds some time to your engine rebuild process so take that info for what it's worth um i'm not i don't know i'm kind of torn i i had only done it on bridgeport engines where i needed the the corners to be on the center iron um I don't know if I'm going to do it for everyone going forward. I, I don't know. Um, so, anyways, that's my thoughts. But, for those of you that watched the video, I hope you guys learned something. I um, hope you guys enjoyed, you know, kind of, I am going to make every video and tell you exactly how it is, even if I mess stuff up. Um, I don't like to edit stuff out, um, especially if it's stuff that I want to teach you guys stuff. You know, the best way to learn is from mistakes. So, hopefully it resonates with you. It definitely has resonated with me to make sure and check that stuff. Um, check it twice, right? So with that, thank you guys very much for watching um, If you want to learn more about this stuff definitely hit that subscribe button. There's a couple more learning videos coming soon I've been working on the rotary truck um, This past week and stacking footage as much as I was ahead You know right before the rally car sold taking care of that whole process selling the rally car kind of took some time and um, If you didn't see that update video, I also got a new job. So kind of transitioning work stuff and this that and the other has been been a pain in the butt pain in the butt the past couple weeks but we're getting ready to start grinding and uh i'm building a new daily driver so cj7 is going to be the new daily driver so if you're into that stuff comment below i'm going to start filming some stuff on it and uh you know if you guys show enough interest i'll upload those videos on here albeit we've been doing more rotary focused content but it's pretty good old jeeps are cool so Thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Keep it rad. Rad dirt bikes. Laddie, what are you doing? You cold? You want to go outside? It's raining. But you can go outside and get wet. Because you don't care. You're a, you're a country dog. And you get wet. Or not. Too cold. Come back inside. <laughs> you were out there 14 seconds. Oh yeah, guys in. I sold my old mountain bike, and I got a new one, and it's sick. 2021 Rocky Mountain Altitude. Coming from a 2010 Specialized Enduro, this bike's like way better in every, it's better. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Stay warm. Stay dry.